Have you ever heard the song, I'm a little bit country and I'm a little bit rock and roll? Well, that twangy tune by Donnie and Marie Osmond is one way to describe the sport of pro wrestling, or should I say pro wrestling. Now, country music has show enough collided once or twice with superstar sports entertainers. And now that cowboy shiznit is officially a thing. Well, I darn toot and declare it's time that we get fixin' to talk more about these cowboys and cowgirls. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes. And won't you please subscribe? Because here are 14 times country music collided with pro wrestling. Try not to two-step to this fiddle-friendly theme for country music fan turned WWE Hall of Fame wrestler James Morris, better known by the moniker Bill Billy Jim. Jim was a simple-minded, shaggy-bearded Appalachian hillbilly from Mud Lick, Kentucky, who could carry a tune for sure, and that tune was a down-home folksy barn dance of a song called Don't Go Messin' With a Country Boy. For the perennial good guy that hillbilly was, it's the perfect tune, even if it does happen to be one of the cheesiest things from the wrestling album. Terry Funk was truly Texas tough. Middle-aged and crazy, the Funker didn't play his character, he lived it. Hailing from the famous Double Cross Ranch in Amarillo, Texas, Funk, along with his father Dory and brother Dory Jr., built a legacy for all time. Over his 50-plus year career, Terrible Terry has had a plethora of theme music, but the coolest was when he used the song Man with a Harmonica from the classic Western Once Upon a Time in the West during his late 80s run in the NWA when he almost murdered the Nature Boy. Ric Flair. And did you know that the Funker released an album of his own during the 80s? Learn more about one of the songs he sang by checking out this video we did a while back. Although he may have led a relatively tragedy-filled life, Kerry Von Erich is a world-class wrestling legend and a former Intercontinental Champion who possessed a memorable theme during his brief WWE run. The initial chopper-like whirl and countryfied rhythm reflected in the song Storm signaled the arrival of a strong and powerful, potent force of nature like a cyclone was about to touch down in the World Wrestling Federation. Not to mention, also, some spirited guitar strumming followed the Texas Tornado as he spun his way out down the aisle toward the squared circle for battle. Well, I call them the natural. In 1992, WCW gave us what they claimed was the greatest wrestling album ever, Slam Jam Volume 1. And while we've been waiting 30 years for Volume 2 to be released, let's look at three tracks in particular. The first being, well, they call him the Natural. Natural! Which was for Dustin Rhodes, the son of a son and a son of a gun son of the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. This steel guitar filled, slice us something else, just put Dustin further in Dusty's shadow as a fairly red and butter baby face. But wait, there's more, because the Naturals, on and off again tag team partner, also got to get into the fun. And what rhymes with fun, boys and girls? That's right, you got it, Barry Windham. Big Barry's entrance theme, He's Smokin', is basically a straight ripoff of the classic rock band Boston and their song Smokin'. This track was no worse, but also no better than the rest of the album. But hey, if you're gonna rip something off, at least rip off an absolute banger, right? And last, but certainly not least, a Leonard Skinner light track that clocks in at just over seven minutes of pure karaoke entertainment, the self-indulgent soliloquy, Free Bird Forever. A heartwarming ballad about how Michael P.S. Hayes came to team up with Terry Gordy and Jimmy Garvin. Now this tune was used by Michael a few times when he wrestled singles matches, but you can't tell me this ain't a fake Free Bird, right down to the way it starts off, all slow and mellow before finally cranking up into some high octane doot doot dootin That's J E F F J 
J-A-R-R-E-T-T. <laughs> the lip-syncing cowboy who arrived in the WWF in 1992 and saw the bright lights of Monday Night Raw as a viable means to force Music City USA to acknowledge his singing talents. Okay, well, that was at least the story Vince McMahon sold him on. Straight out of Nashville, Tennessee, and dressed in one of the oddest ring attires of all time that made him look like a male stripper, this catchy little country theme song gave Double J the ultimate swag. Ain't he great? Mostly recognized for his contributions as a cornerstone of the Attitude Era, the Rogue D.O. Double G spent his days working hard on the go during his initial WWE run when he was billed as the roadie, an assistant to Jeff Jarrett. Written and produced by who else but the godfather of pro wrestling theme music, Jim Johnston, With My Baby Tonight was a musical love note that Johnston wrote for his wife. Now this catchy little ditty is certainly superior to Achy Breaky Heart, and you can always thank the real Double J for for that. Vince McMahon once envisioned something different that would revolutionize the idea of cowboy gimmicks in pro wrestling. Traditionally, cowboy tag teams like the Black Jacks or the Texas Outlaws had been bad guys. So by contrast, the smoking guns, Billy and Bart, hit the scene as baby faces, wearing smiles, cream colored hats and jackets, and sporting some amazing mustaches and mullets. Riding high in the saddle with this upbeat jamboree by Jim Johnston, the three time tag team champions will also go down down in history as the greatest cowboy tag team of the 90s. Okay, so I guess that's a pretty narrow category. Who could ever forget the melodious melody of Kurt Hennig crooning alongside the rest of the West Texas Rednecks as they performed their anti-hip-hop classics in late 90s WCW. And while there are pockets of people who consider their one-hit wonder, Rap is Crap, to be the greatest country music endeavor in wrestling history, WCW's corporate suits in Hotlanta, well, they felt otherwise. Obviously, in this day and age, a gimmick like this would never get the green light, let alone have a music video with Barry Free freaking Wyndham banging the drum all day while Mr. Perfect sang about Willie frickin' Nelson. WWE's cruiserweight cowboy Jimmy Wang Yang has probably the most cliche country music theme song. But first a question I'm sure you're asking yourself right now. Who in their ever-loving minds thought an Asian cowboy pretending to be from the Lone Star state of Texas would be a big hit in the WWE around 2006? Now the sad thing is that Jimmy could actually go and wrestle, having been featured in WCW, TNA, and ROH before getting saddled with this gimmick. Saddled? Get it? Ah. <sighs> Seriously though, this tune would be a much better fit for cowboy Brock Lesnar, wouldn't it? Hardcore country! If the job of an entrance theme is to bring the crowd to their feet, then Hardcore Country succeeds with flying colors. Sung by the horse-loving, hell-raising country girl from Richmond, Virginia, Mickey James' Hardcore Country highlights her fantastic voice, all the while telling the story of her background and who she really is. The instruments in the form of riffy guitars and clappy drums give off a great country music vibe and present Mickey as one rough, tough woman wrestler who is Southern proud and ready and willing to fight for what she believes in. Cowboy James Storm didn't need any damn luck when he finally broke out on his own. He needed a badass theme song to go along with his brawling and heavy drinking ways. The Cowboy was an Impact Wrestling mainstay ever since the company's genesis, being part of two of its most popular tag teams, America's Most Wanted and Beer Money Incorporated. However, it wasn't until he embarked on a singles career with this banger of an entrance theme, Long Necks and Red Necks, which became the first song TNA shot a music video for and also released on Country Music Radio.
The anxious millennial cowboy that is Hangman Adam Page has quickly morphed into one of the most lovable members of the AEW roster. Fans have gravitated toward his beer drinking, buckshot lariat swinging ways, and gotten emotionally invested in his intriguing storylines thus far. A Western hero of his caliber needs to strut to the ring to something as memorable as the Alamo, and Ghost Town Triumph by Vincent Padula is indeed that type of song. Can't you just envision Hangman riding off on his trusty stallion with a whiskey bottle in hand and this triumphant theme playing as the sun sets.